why don't we take a look at some common problems and we can, we can figure out how to better isolate where we should be looking and what tools out of our toolbox we should use for that thing. Sounds good. So we're, uh, we're back on my lab machine here. I've got this mounted file system. You saw it earlier when I was looking at some of the tools that, that we were showing off, but it's under slash mount. And I've noticed that if I just try to make even an empty file, it tells me there's no space left, right? We're going to start troubleshooting by checking to see if there is in fact any space left. And if we use DF, we see that yeah, this is a pretty small file system, but it says there's only 3% in use. So why the heck can't I, can't I make a file? So if we go back to what Scott was talking about earlier, now, I don't know, any, first of all, Scott, anything you would try other than, because I know exactly what to go to to fix the problem. And to be honest, I already know how to look for what the problem is. <laughs> I was trying to think of other things that might help inform it. But really, just the knowledge oh. of how the platform works is what's fueling this. <laughs> yeah, so we know that there are two aspects of a file system, right? There's the data that's used for storing file contents. And I can see that's not what's causing your out of space right. error. But there's another component that is a limited quantity, which is what? Which is exactly what you were just talking about. It's almost like we were leading into that. <laughs> So if we do, I mentioned earlier the DF-I flag, but you might've noted that I did not use it because it would have just totally blown this out of the water because that's exactly what's wrong. You can see that if we look for the inodes on slash mount, that they are completely exhausted. And it's because it's such a tiny file system, there's only 128 of them to begin with. Now, there's options you can pass to MKFS when you're creating a file system that tell it how many inodes to allocate, or at least what percentage of inodes it should allocate. So if you have a file system that needs a ton of little files, which in this case, the exact way that I caused this problem is if we go into directory number two instead of directory number one, I've got a bunch of empty files in here that are just numbered. And you'll notice that they stop uh, somewhere around 115. And that's because that's how many inodes were free when I started the for loop that created them, right? So if I just were to remove one of these, and then look, sorry, DF, I keep doing that. There is no DH. There is no DH command, guys. <laughs> now I have one free inode. That's because every file takes at least one inode. Now, what is it? If it expands past so many data blocks, that's when, that's when it takes more, more, more than one inode, correct? No. So every file gets one inode. Okay. And if you like I said, I was busy chatting when you were describing it. <laughs> right. So if you, this is a great question, though. If you expand past the um, number of data blocks included in the inode data, it actually takes data blocks from the file system and converts them to additional data block pointers. And this is a concept known as indirect file pointing. So the inode points to an indirect pointer, which is this block of additional pointers that then point to data blocks. And you can actually go several layers deep in that to store large files. And some file systems are smart enough. I think XFS does this where uh, if it's running out of inodes, it can actually dynamically allocate more. So that's Correct. one of the reasons we like XFS. And XFS is the default for Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, 7, 8, and 9. Uh, and it does dynamically create inodes, which is one of the reasons why you chose what file system for this demonstration, Nate? EXT4, because I don't think XFS would have even allowed me to make a file system this small. <laughs> so that is true, but <laughs> XFS would also make it really hard for us to demonstrate this because it would just keep converting data blocks into yeah. inode uh, sections so that we could keep making these tiny or very little uh, data stored files. Which I'm guessing we could still eventually exhaust, right? But it, would be, it wouldn't be as easy. <laughs> What's the solution for, for running out of inodes? The solution, there's a couple solutions. One would be you have to plan ahead of time. If you're using EXT4, you have to plan ahead of time and allocate more inodes if you know you're going to have a bunch of tiny files. And there's certain workloads that do make a bunch of tiny files. Some web frameworks do it. Some disk-based storage and retrieval systems will make a bunch of tiny files. So those are things you're going to want to consider. And when you're creating the file system, you're going to want to say, allocate more inodes than you normally would. 
or use XFS, right? A big enough disk that'll support XFS, use XFS, and then this will expand. Unfortunately, in the case where I'm at, unless you know something I don't, the only real fix is to either make a new file system and migrate to it or delete some files. So there's one more fix, but it is only really valuable if you have used an extensible device. So if you were mm. using logical management, for example, and you added you more can extend, space. Yeah. yeah. And when you extend, it actually will create additional inode tables when you extend. Uh, but again, like XFS doesn't matter because as soon as you extend, it'll just create inode tables as it needs when you start storing data there again. So yes, extending the file system would do it as well. I was trying to think of solutions that didn't. In this case, I can't extend it because there's no more space left on my disk. That's actually why it's so tiny. It wasn't just for demo purposes. <laughs>